and welcome to the Perfectly Blue Podcast with Chef and Wack. Inspiring you to be better. Ta-da! Ta-da! Oh, brilliant. Okay, so we're going to get started, guys. Okay, look, so, um, hello and welcome to our first live. Um, my name's Shafina. I'm Waka. So, um, on deciding today's topic, we, um, obviously, given the current situation with lockdown and, you know, everyone sort of going through different things, whether it's, um, you know, fur- being furloughed or, you know, being poorly or having sick family or missing your family. Um, we thought that building your resilience uh, during lockdown would, you know, be a really good topic to start. So what is resilience? Resilience is your ability to uh, bounce back from stressful situations. It doesn't mean avoiding stress. It means that you um, you can... Um, you know, you learn to thrive during in stressful times. Um, so, you know... Um, Helps you grow, doesn't it? Yeah, you react positively, positively to stress. Stressful events are always... They're always going to occur during the course of your life. And it's how you um, face that stress, right? Some people, because of negative self-talk, for instance, um, see a stressful as ve- event as, as um, deconstructive um, and destructive Whereas others you find, um, and you'll know this from your circle of friends, from people that you know, when they come across any life stresses, they see it as a positive challenge and they start planning and strategizing and their self-talk is all positive. So, um, yeah, so we thought we'd touch on on resilience and um, we're going to start, it's obviously the first time you've come across the term, with a short practical exercise just to kind of go through, you know, what resilience is. If uh, if it's a bit childish for you, ignore it. If it isn't, well, I hope you learn something from it. So just give us two ticks. So um, this cup here, um, we're not very really fancy with our equipment, are we? <laughs> <laughs> but this cup here, if you can look at that cup there and imagine that cup to be your resilience, right? Um, and that cup is going to hold your stress. That's what it's going to. It's going to hold it at you know at bay while you can then get on with a functional, healthy, happy life, right? And your day. Um, so what we have now is stress in this, uh, well, in my protein shaker <laughs> and stress now is pouring into your resilience cup and you can see your capacity is reducing, reducing, reducing until you get to overcapacity and the stress starts to essentially overfill and it overflows. So how does, um, that overflowing of stress manifest itself physically and emotionally? What you will find is if you're irritable, um, angry outbursts, for instance, um, physical symptoms such as fatigue, tired, you know, tiredness, essentially, headaches, um, just really not engaging with people anymore, cutting off and withdrawing. That can be a sign that essentially you've overstepped your resilience and your overcapacity, and you need to then work on that resilience. Yeah. So how do we how do we do that? I guess um, you know is the next question, isn't it? So. What I'm going to do is just really briefly go over a few things that you can do and you can practice. And I'm sure a lot of you have probably already heard a lot of this. Um, so what, what this is, is it's a, it's, a, it's a gentle and hopefully helpful reminder. Um, but, you know, go away, try some of these things and, and see how you get on, I guess. And it'd be lovely to hear your feedback as well as to what you thought of the hints and tips and, you know, see how you got along with them. So I think first and foremost, it's building your social network. Um, positive relationships, right? So it's not just building your social networks and building them in an unhealthy manner, which can often mean, you know, 500 friends on Facebook, which is not particularly helpful for your resilience. It means face-to-face communication with loved ones, with friends, and it's communicating with them in um, a way that is constructive, right? So in order to increase your social network, I mean, what I what I find quite a lot is people seem to stick to their own kind of group of people, Um, with their own circles, with people they know that building a rapport with would be quite easy, right? So rapport is like your ability to engage them in conversation. If you see somebody that looks like you, you know it's going to be easy to engage them, right? Whereas somebody that doesn't look like you, somebody from a different circle of life, a different walk of life, well, you've got to step out your boundaries a little bit there, haven't you? You've got to drop your barriers in order to engage. However, um, what you may well find is um, once you drop your barriers and you're you're happy to engage with people outside your usual social circle, you, you, you may well learn quite a lot, you know, about yourself, about them, about different ways of life um, and, and, you know, resilience and coping. And what it does is it increases your social network as well. So that at times of stress, that's one more person you can go to to talk with right, and to share your stresses with. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, secondly is, you know, relationships that you already have whether that's brothers, sisters, whether that's, uh, you know, work colleagues, um, you know, our friends, um, is 
in the way in which you communicate with people. Now, one of the key skills when it comes to communication is listening. Um, and, and one of the most effective forms of listening is active listening. So what's active listening? Active listening is when you are an active participant when somebody is talking, right? You don't just switch off and uh, get your phone out or start looking around the room for the things or engage in closed body posture. So like cross your arms and cross your legs and just look like you're not interested. It's when you engage in open body posture, you are looking at the person that's talking to you um, and through the use of facial expressions and body language, <laughs> And through your speech, you let them know that, you know, you are an active participant in this conversation. So if somebody is saying something to you, you're paraphrasing, you're repeating what they said back to them. Um, and you'll find that that sort of listening, active listening, is it's the best form of silent flattery. Because the person you're talking to will feel, wow, you know, I'm, I'm, this is a really, really uh, positive conversation, right? Because he's listening to me or she's listening to me. And, um, you know, uh, you're kind of feeding back to me as well during the course of the conversation. Um, so I definitely suggest that, that participate in more active listening with the people you already talk with. So um, what else could you do? Well, when you are communicating with people, try to be present as well. Um, now, it sounds so obvious, doesn't it? Like being present. But actually, it's really difficult to put your day stresses behind you to clear your mind and to concentrate solely on what somebody's saying is very tricky. And that's why the skill of active listening is very tricky to get hold of as well. And um, if any of my you know, more professional colleagues are listening or anyone's been on a communication course yourself, you will know a lot of it is based around active listening. So definitely something to look into and definitely something to practice as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, what, what else can you do? Um, well, quite simply, you can treat people as you would like to be treated yourself. Right. And it doesn't sound so obvious again that, but it's such a nice thing. If you like to receive charity, if you like to receive gifts at a certain time of year, do the same thing in return. These small token gestures um, will help to build your positive relationships. And people that respond to that sort of uh, those sort of gestures are positive influences in your life. Keep a hold of them. They're very, very important, especially at times of stress. Um, and specifically for the lockdown, because obviously I'm talking about face-to-face -face communication, which at the moment is quite difficult with, um, you know, unfortunately people out there who are shielding and um, who are unwell, uh, you know, at the moment the lockdown, so we're all isolating, unfortunately. Um, use technology. So make full use of things like this, you know, um, in a positive way. So tools like, um, you know, the Instagram, tools like WhatsApp, video calling, um, you'll be surprised at how um, how how much people look forward to that, yeah. especially the elderly in your family or around you, um, you know, and friends and things that, that you know that bit of communication can make the difference in their day really. So the next thing, so that's a short, well, it's really short on positive relationships, um, is self awareness. So uh, self awareness is it sounds really obvious. It's self explanatory really. It's being aware of yourself. Now, it sounds silly, doesn't it? As in, I'm aware of myself all the time, but if I were to ask you now, um, if I were to ask you to describe yourself to me, right, but without using terms or descriptive terms that are external to yourself, so I don't want you to talk about your car, I don't want you to talk about your friends or your occupation or your family or your house, I want you to tell me about you personally. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Uh, what activities do you like to engage in? What makes you angry? What makes you happy? Right? How long could you go on for until you stop? Now, if like me, you know, and, and like all of us really out there, you have difficulty in doing this, um, it means you, you need to concentrate a bit more on self-awareness, which is basically being aware of your own thoughts, your own feelings throughout the course of the day and, you know, uh, weeks and months. And um, it's, um, it's knowing how you're going to react, so how you're going to behave when certain stressful situations crop up, right? Because if you don't know how you're going to react to a stressful situation, it's very difficult to then prepare for it in advance. So for instance, if I know that I am a procrastinator, right? I procrastinate, I put things off. I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just laziness. <laughs> yeah, so if I, if I, uh, if I, uh, if, if, um, if I, if I think I'm, if, I, if I'm lazy, and I have a big task coming up, and I know for whatever reason I put that task off. If I recognise that in advance and I've been given a project at work or I need to do the gardening, then um, 
I need to tackle that and I need to strategize in a positive way, right? So if I know I procrastinate, I have to say, right, okay, how am I going to get through this project? And I'm going to do it constructively. Well, might not break it up or why not link the activity with more positive things in my life? So that's one example, basically, of how self-awareness can help. So if in the initial example, you were having difficulty, you know, describing yourself and, you know, you were having trouble with that. What I um, would say is, is there's one main thing is a reflective journal. Reflective journals are so helpful um, with connecting with your own feelings, thoughts and behaviours during the course of the day. It can be anything, just pick up a diary from anywhere you like, pick up an A4 notepad um, and at the end of your day, sit down and go through your thoughts and feelings through the course of that day. What in, it, what in particular annoyed you, right? What made you happy? What's mulling in the back of your mind that you haven't processed yet? And write them down. And now go through them step by step and try to understand that why did, say, for example, a comment from a work colleague annoy you? And how did you react to that annoyance? Did you, did you withdraw into yourself and not say anything and just let it fester? Did you react? Did you react appropriately or did you overreact, right? So recognise, you know, the feeling, the, 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 well, the stimulus, I guess, what somebody said to you um, and put that into context how it made you feel and then your reaction as well and what we're doing what you're doing this exercise is essentially going through your thoughts and feelings and you're recognizing triggers and you're recognizing potentially negative reactions negative self-talk and once you recognize the problems if there are any then you can go and you can work on them um, and there's, there's loads of resources out there um, you know that you can look at in terms of reflective I think you can download reflective journals actually um, there's loads of websites out there. Uh, Mind.org.uk is a fantastic one. Um, and then loads of others. The NHS website as well. So another thing is to be more self-aware is to um, let go of uh, defensiveness. Now, that's a really, really difficult thing to do. It's when somebody gives criticises you, right? But you take it as criticism. You don't take it constructively. Um, criticism is, the, is, is like food, right? But it tastes bitter. That's the problem. But you have to feed off that criticism. You have to see the silver lining to it. Um, because sometimes people have a, well, a, a, an odd way of putting things across, right? So you've got to take criticism and you've got to treat it for what it is. It's feedback to you. You've got to be open to feedback. You've got to drop your defences. You've got to understand that feedback. And if it's sensible, then engage with it. And, um, you know, hopefully see feedback as an opportunity to improve as a person um and to you know to to build your self-awareness um and and you know as, as part of your reflective journal as well i forgot to mention you review your successes and failures as well um always do that um i, I come across so many people who you will give them compliments but they 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 have real difficulty in 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 first understanding the compliment and then they don't engage with it they feel as if they don't deserve the compliment and um you know if you feel that's you um, give yourself a tap on the back once in a while. Look after yourself. Um, yeah, so that's that's my two pieces on on uh, so self awareness and uh, positive relationships. And I'll pass across to you, Shafina. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so yeah. an, um, another sort of way to build your resilience is being mindful. So, what does it mean to be mindful? It means being present in the moment. It means that you are focused on what you're doing, um, and you know you're not sort of distracted with, with other sort of feelings and thoughts. You just in that moment in that zone when you're and when you do that what you'll find is that um you know your stress levels will come down and you um your focus will improve and you'll just you'll find really long lasting benefits from being mindful um and there's a great sort of technique that guys just going to go into now about um breathing exercises that can help um you know with um making you sort of aware of how to be mindful yeah so with the breathing exercises um now, uh, this is something you can do towards the end of your day, any time of your day, really, if you feel things are getting on top of you. And it's a way of connecting with yourself, right? Just slowing things down and recognizing and just uh, grounding yourself and being in the present. So this breathing exercises, and there's, there's loads of different exercises to achieve grounding. So grounding techniques and have a look around on the internet. There's loads out there that are really good. Mind.org.uk is a website, which is very good for techniques. Um, so what you do is essentially take yourself to a quiet place where you don't think you're going to be disturbed. Um, and just settle yourself down, just sit down for, you know, a minute or so and um, be aware of your own breathing, right? So you've got to be quite steady before you start 
Um, put your hands on your knees, close your eyes and breathe in through your nose for say, three to four seconds, right? And then hold that breath in there for a second and then exhale through your mouth. Yeah, so you breathe in through your nose and you breathe out through your mouth. And while doing this, you're attempting to essentially clear your mind, um, clear your mind and center yourself and just recognize, you know, any thoughts and feelings that you may be going through um, and try to process them as well. Um, do this, uh, the breathing, so through the nose and out through the mouth over the course of five or six seconds and continue the cycle for about two minutes or so. And you'll find at the end of the two minutes that a few thoughts may bubble to the top. So these subconscious thoughts that are stressing you out, whatever it is that's driving that, you know, anxiety, that worry or causing you to feel um, overwhelmed. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic exercise. You could try it during the course of the day, say, or at the end of the day. So yeah, definitely want to suggest. But there are other exercises out there as well, grounding techniques um, out there on the internet. And there's loads of books and things like this too. So yeah, have a look. Okay. Um, and another thing, another way to build your resilience is self-care. Um, I think a lot of the time, self-care, um, especially for mothers, it's sort of, we, we always sort of put ourselves at, at the back of the queue. You know, we always put um, our kids and our husbands and our families and friends, everybody ahead of ourselves. And, you know, we forget that, you know, we matter too. Um, but what is self-care? Self-care is doing something that makes you feel good. It's, um, you know, it's sort of a task that helps improve your mental, your physical and your emotional health. Um, and it's very individual to everybody. But a lot of the times, especially sort of, you know, um, like on, on the TV and on social media, you know, self cares always sort of comes across as, oh, you know, you need to get a fancy, yeah. um, materialism. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You, you need to, you know, go out shopping and, you know, have, buy lots of things and that's your self care. And I don't think that is for me anyway. I don't think that's self care for me. It's sort of something simple, like reading a book with a mint, cup of mint tea and, you know, I'm happy. And that's sort of uh, fills my cup if you like. And, um, well, there's nothing wrong with a nice car and a nice house. So <laughs> yeah, <don't. laughs> We're not Buddhist monks here, you know. <laughs> but yeah, when you when you do sort of um, when you do sort of um, look after yourself and you do your self care, you know you are in a place where you're mindful of your needs, so you are able to better take care of the people around you. Um, and I think there's a well, there's a really good example of if you think of um, you, when you're on an airplane and they give you the emergency announcement, they always say put on your mask first. You know why do they say that? Why do they say put your mask on first? Because obviously you need to breathe, and you know to for you to be good to somebody else, you need to be able to breathe. You can't look after your kids or you know whoever's with you if you don't um, if you don't look after your own needs, if you don't have your own oxygen. So I think it's, you know, it's something that's very understated, but um, I want to share a little person, personal example with you um, of my mum. Now, my mum used to always, um, and I love that she used to do this, she used to always like sit and eat with us. And um, and so I've, I've, I've got the habit with my kids, I like always sit and eat with them, but I know a lot of mothers don't do that. They'll, they'll feed the husbands and they'll feed the kids and, you know, they come at the end of the queue, by which time they're hungry, the food's gone cold and, you know, they get fed up and annoyed. So, you know, take take a hint from my mum there, you know, make sure you eat with your kids. Don't let your food get cold. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, moving on. Other, other ways that you can do self-care is, you know, it's basics. Just go out for a walk, um, have a bath, read a book. You know, there's, as I was saying about the gratitude journal, you know, just write, writing down three things that you, um, every day that you find, um, you know, that you're grateful yeah, for. Yeah. Your health, you know, yeah. um, your family, um, you know, there's so many things and obviously that's Especially very... in the UK as well. Yeah. There? There's so much. I mean, clean water and electricity compared to, you know, some of the places out there, some of the difficulties people are going through in the world right now. We have so much to be grateful for. It's unbelievable really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, sorry. And yeah. Uh, the last point that I want to make is sort of obviously everyone hears from, you know, loads of different backgrounds and this will go onto YouTube. So, you know, I want to keep it open. Um, is knowing your purpose, you know, why are you here? If you don't know your purpose, then, you know, are you living every day to fulfill your purpose? You can't, obviously you can't do that. So, you know, you know, really reflect on that. You know, what is your purpose? Why are you here? And, you know, I, are you living in a way that meets that purpose? So it's a very sort of personal, um, it's a very personal question that you need to really sort of think about. And that kind of sort of brings us to the um, end of the presentation, I guess, oh, well, sorry, live, yeah. in terms of um, the discussion. So... In essence, resilience uh, is 
your ability to bounce back from stress it's your ability to thrive during stressful times so you know we've looked at your self-awareness we've looked at your um you having positive uh, relationships in in your life we've looked at being mindful and we've you know discussed mindful um techniques and um you know being self-aware and of course your purpose um and you know sorry uh, bear with us i know you've all put loads of comments but the phone's sideways and i can't read sideways <laughs> so so uh forgive me for that um and i know right right you did make a comment before but it's like gone up so i missed it but you know i, I can sort of see loads of thumbs up so thank you guys and i can see loads of love hearts so you know appreciate the support and obviously it's half nine on a saturday um so you know thank you for sort of taking the time out um one of the questions that was submitted was um you know i feel guilty doing something for myself mm -hmm. um and this uh, this is a good friend of mine who's actually on here she said i feel i feel really guilty do, for doing things for myself um and you know i hope the bit about self-care about um you know fulfilling your cup first um before you sort of pour out to others well you can't pour out to others if you don't fill that cup first um and i think there's that quote isn't there about um an, an empty lantern doesn't shine any light so yeah. um self-care is a fuel that lights the lantern yeah. so you know bear that one in mind <laughs> um so you know that's it that really brings us to the end of it um yeah so uh the youtube channel instagram yeah please make sure you follow us and subscribe um, um on instagram facebook um we have the Reset Yourself um, bootcamp going as well on YouTube. So, you know, as I say, all the feedback, yeah, it's really yeah. positive when we take um, it and we try to grow from it. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah and uh, also, yeah, we'll be doing another live. Um, hopefully, we'll be better. We'll position a camera a bit better. <laughs> yeah. um, I think somebody yeah. just said you can scroll up for questions. Um, it's kind of funny trying to read them sideways. Um, okay, Rice Paul, I thought I thought a lot about this week. Self awareness. It was. Oh bless you. So Rise put that self awareness was one of her New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. Um loads of thumbs up and high fives and mashallahs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um so we'll leave it there. Thank you guys. Um and we'll be back uh, next Saturday. So and and uh, we'll be discussing um we sort of decided to discuss homeschooling in uh, during a pandemic because obviously a lot of people are sort of forced into homeschooling at the minute. Um, so we thought we'll sort of give you loads of hints and tips on how to yeah. get uh, to sort of deal with that. Yeah, I guess it works as well if you if you are a key worker, you're sending your kids to school. It's just advice on home educating, really, isn't it? And it's just hints and tips of what we've learned. So hopefully, you know, passing something on. But we're here to grow as well. So, like I say, if you guys have any hints or tips, or you've learned anything, or you've got anything to contribute from today's talk. Please comment, please, um, you know, leave leave some feedback for us or email us, um, you know, and like I say, grow together really, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah thank you very much. Thank it's you, guys. Lovely talking Take to care. You all. Bye. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Please like, subscribe and share. Bye.